Hey guys, welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. Uh, so the pictures of the um, the water and being um, that is out of Newport on the Oregon coast. Mr. Wonderful sent me those videos uh, on his way out yesterday to go tuna fishing. Um, every year we usually go tuna fishing for albacore tuna. Um, and it's, it's kind of a big deal for our food preservation for the year. We, we do can it. And it's another one of those things that once you eat home canned tuna, you don't want to eat store-bought tuna anymore. Um, so those videos were courtesy of Mr. Wonderful. Uh, going out to go tuna fishing. So we will have some uh, photos of tuna fish in the upcoming videos. Um, that are from the next day from him getting the tuna fish processed and canned. So um, I think his plan is to actually uh, fillet the fish, you know, the next day, uh, which would be today because he went fishing yesterday, um, and then can the day after that, after you let the meat uh, sit and bleed out. The fish are bled out on the boat, uh, and we have a wonderful great friend that has a big beautiful boat that we go out on, um, and we're very fortunate to have a friend with a big boat like that. Um, so, just, you know, again, very grateful. And we are processing this flat of tomatoes that I got from a friend of mine. Um, we're just coring and scoring them really quickly uh, to go into the freezer until I decide to make a big batch of salsa. This isn't, it's enough to make a batch of salsa, but I'm not ready to make a batch of salsa. Um, I'm still busy processing other things. And that's the cool thing about tomatoes is that you can core them and score them and put them in the freezer until you are ready to do salsa and then it actually takes away part of the process, the skinning process for you when you pull them out of the freezer. Cord and scored. Just an X on the bottom is all. Some of these, and I was prepared for this, some of these are that whole cherry tomato. It just wasn't worth salvaging. Um, there's, a, there's a couple in here that are like that. You know, they've just gone too far. And that's okay, that's, those, that's what makes the best canning tomatoes are the ones that are super ripe because you get the best flavor out of them. And so and that's one of the things, when you're canning uh, and you're going to can things like, well, tomatoes, peaches, pears, apples, uh, don't be afraid to get ice get the, they call them the canning, you know, the canning box. When you go to like the farmer's market, um, go to the canning box or the uh, the second, sometimes they call them, sometimes they call them the coal. Uh, and I don't mind cutting a little bit of bad stuff away. You do need to be diligent and make sure, sorry about the conversation that's happening behind us. The uh, chocolate morsels are wwe in the living room. Uh, it does take a little bit more time 
to, you know, go through and cut off some of the bad spots, but you guys, really not that much extra time. It's so worth it. Um, and oftentimes, like here, now here, it's interesting, peaches here are really expensive compared to Oregon. I don't know why, but I went to go buy a box of peaches the other day, and they were $60 a box. And I was like, no way, I'm not paying that. Uh, that's $60 for 25 pounds. Um, and I'm not at all, farmers have got to make the money that they feel they deserve. So I'm not at all judging it. Please don't think that. Um, I'm not, I'm not mad about their price. I'm just saying that I'm not going to afford it. Um, and I did have one that took my name and number and called me when he had a box of coals. And unfortunately, I couldn't get to him that day, and he was in a town that was more than an hour away from me. Um, but his box of coals was $25. That's a significant rebate. Uh, and if I would have been free that day and able to drive the hour and 15 minutes to go get them, I would have. Um, so, and I, because I don't mind doing this, I don't mind sitting at my kitchen sink and, and, uh, cutting out the, the bad spots. Now, it is important to cut out your bad spots. Um, took me a while to get back there. Uh, <laughs> because of the, you know, the health concerns of canning. Um, the big concern of canning and preserving our food is that, um, You know, it's, we're going to get foodborne illnesses, foodborne bad bacteria, and so therefore uh, a lot of those are derived from spoiling of your fruit. Uh, so therefore, it is important to cut out the bad spots of the fruit so that you're not putting that into your food. Anything that you do not want to eat fresh, if you would not eat it off of a plate, Right now, as you're cutting it off the fruit, do not put it in your jars and can it. Uh, you know, if you if you can't, if you're not gonna eat, like, see this spot right here? I'm not gonna eat that. If you were to cut that and put that on a plate, I'm not gonna eat it. I'm gonna cut it out. And then I'm gonna cut up the rest of this beautiful tomato and put that on a plate and I'll eat that. So therefore, that is what I will put in my jar. See that spot right there? This one's got a few of them. Those are just bruising. Some people would call them rot spots. Rot spots sound a lot worse. Just cut them off, no big deal. These will go in the freezer and uh, in Ziploc baggies, and they will sit there until I'm ready to can them. Doesn't affect the um, flavor of them. And in fact, when they thaw, they um, a, a lot of juice drains off of them in this process. And then when they thaw, the, uh, the skin just slips right off of them. It's amazing.
get a whole box of uh, free tomatoes. At least when I get a whole box of free tomatoes, I really don't care if I've got a few that I need to, you know, feed to the chickens. And, um, supplement my chicken feed with uh, some fresh produce that's not edible to me and, you know, maybe cut off some bad spots to be able to can uh, 25 pounds of salsa for free. my video the other day I did say that the last two years I had made 150 pounds of salsa or of uh, tomatoes but that wasn't true I got to thinking about that I did do it the last two years but I didn't I didn't do last year because um, last year we were moving so the two years before that I did do it I, I lost a year in in moving um, so I'm sorry that I said that and um, I hate it when I accidentally like say something to you guys and then have to correct it later uh, but that's that's just it happens I lost a year when we were moving and I to me my brain just thinks the last two years I've done I've done you know um, 150 pounds because there's just no way that I would go a whole year without canning it, I, there's no way that it should take us a whole year to move, but it did. So there we are. So these will go out to the freezer in the garage. All right, now that that task is done, let's head outside for a little while and see if we can get anything done in the garden. Um, it is six o'clock, so I need to feed the dogs uh, their evening meal. And um, then we will get out in the garden and see if there's anything we can do out there. We're going to dog mom it today. Mm. I have to turn the lights out. Okay, now we're ready. Okay. Right. We're a little, uh, admittedly, we have a little bit of cabin fever. Um, we have been for the last, it's been like nine days because of the heat. So, um, we're all a little, a little wild. We've been doing the best we can coming out early morning and evening, of course, but, um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been nice to have a, a, you know, a break. And that's, that's how I've been looking at it is this is a break. I'm going to be, t I'm going to take it. And I'm going to be grateful. And so it's been nice. I started reading a book. Um, reading a book in summertime for me is like only for vacation. So 
Uh, that's a new one on me. Uh, I'm gonna feed the dogs and then we'll go out to the garden. The elusive farm cat Rogi shows up. She doesn't know that her mom is filming her. Nope, no touching. <laughs> For those of you who are new, this is uh, Rogue, and she is the barn cat that we brought from Oregon with us when we moved. And she's not wild wild, she's just sassy. I wish I could tell you how glorious this feels. Uh, the coolness that comes in with these storms. It is just such a welcome uh, relief. We might get rained on. But that's okay. I won't be mad. compost pile. Like we got a sunflower head that fell down today. Hmm. Harvest what I don't want to get saturated with water. There shouldn't be any tomatillos ready because I just checked them yesterday and nobody was near ready, but that guy's ready enough. They're looking a little wild, but that's okay. This is a Amish paste, and this is a indigo blue. And then, of course, we've got the queen of the night. They're so beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna go get my snips. One thing about okra, you gotta harvest it or it'll get too big fast.
There's really no sense of taking two in. Um, I'm gonna take this lady here. You gotta you gotta ruin the sunflower show too, huh? Jeez. Oh, there she is. Twice. That one's going to go in the house with me. Look. Happy birthday, little sunflower. It's a weed. I thought it was another sunflower. like a pretty simple haul today. It's sad to watch your plants succumb to pest pressure, um, but at the same time it's kind of part of having a organic garden. Um, and not spraying chemicals on my food is more important to me than uh, you know, my garden looking perfect all the time. So these plants have been here for a long time and they've given me a lot of food. So I'm not, I'm not upset at the plants. It's just always sad when things come to an end, but when things, when one door closes, another one opens. So the fall garden door is beginning to open. can't do much I've already done um, you know the front part of this garden uh, and I can't do much while the sprinklers on so we will head back out to the um, market garden area uh, but first I'm gonna drop off what I have in my bucket to the chickens because it has squash bugs and I don't want to take the squash bugs out there with me Show you Billie Jean. Oh, she's looking so cute right now <laughs> in that little like grove of bushes. <laughs> you doing baby girl? She says I'm hiding mom. Nobody sees me. <laughs> You're pretty cute you know it. I want to take some pictures of her.
carnage in my wheelbarrow. <laughs> Squash bug annihilation. The buckets are all weeded. I have some random potatoes in here. Um, there's one. There's one. But that's okay. So these are all ready to be planted in. There's, unfortunately, we didn't get all the dirt cleaned off around the, the tubs. Um, I ended up putting a sprinkling system up here so it kind of took away my time that I was spending a little bit of time every day like kind of just spraying the stuff uh, from in between the um, tubs because there's that black weed fabric down there um, but anywhere that there's dirt the zombie grass and whatever these things are uh, is growing in it this is like it's like cane grass it's i don't know it's weird uh the animals don't like it the chickens will scratch through it but the big animals don't like it um check out the melon he's still over here living his best life <laughs> isn't he cute um no more so far but Again, super happy about the peppers out here. Uh, Mr. Wonderful is going to be really happy about that too. So. All right, to the chicken coop we go. I hope, I hope.
it. Loop tight. And with that, you guys, I am going to uh, bid you a farewell. My next thing to do is to mow. And I'm quite certain that you guys don't want to watch me mow. So uh, I'm going to go do some evening mowing while it's so gloriously cool out here. I mean, it's still, it feels like it's still 97, but man, that sure beats 106, 103, 107. Uh, you know, triple digits. Triple digits is just, mm, it used to not be too much for me, but it's a lot now, and uh, I prefer to stay out of it, so, uh, but it's feeling really good right now. I don't know. Let's see if my watch, my watch tells me it's 86, um, which is awesome. So, uh, I am going to go mow, and I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with me a little bit in the kitchen, coring and scoring some free tomatoes, uh, and then of course taking care of the garden a little bit. Uh, maintenance is, is always, always, always there, and um, I enjoy taking you along for my maintenance. It's kind of, you know, monotonous work. I can, I can just work and let my hands be busy and my mind be free. Um, and it's also very satisfying, you know, I mean, the way that the weeds and the things like that grow around here, it seems to me like every week is this huge satisfying turnaround um, because the weeds just get so big before I get back around to them. Uh, so, but it's feeling good. We're starting to get things cleaned up uh, from being so behind and, uh, and that's, that's feeling really good. I'm not sure what she's after exactly. Um, but she's having a really good time. <laughs> uh, she was just jumping around a little bit. And so she probably found, found a frog or a toad. Uh, she finds a lot of those. never short of entertainment around here but I hope you guys had a beautiful day and uh, I will catch you on the next one yours truly <laughs>